Hi, my name is Helen Cassidy. I'm a lecturer at the IINH and I'm owner at Food Hugs. At Food Hugs, I run a very popular fermentation workshop where we learn how to make sauerkraut, we discuss kefir and we discuss kombucha. And participants often ask me, what is the best probiotic to take in your daily diet? So I'm just going to go through some of the options and um, just so that you can decide for yourself. So the first one I'm going to discuss is sauerkraut. So I have a nice big jar of sauerkraut here and you can see a couple more in the background. Sauerkraut is very simple to make. You're just taking cabbage and you're adding salt. Uh, you're letting it sweat a little bit and then you're packing it into a jar where it's going to go through an anaerobic process of fermentation, which means that there's no oxygen allowed. You're sealing the jar. You can add all sorts of flavors and spices. So I love to do that. So you can see the ones behind me and the one I have here are these kind of nice bright yellowy colors so i use a lot of turmeric and ginger and cumin to flavor it up sauerkraut is a particularly good source of lactobacillus and other lactic acid bacteria which have been researched uh, to see the impact that they have on your gut on your bowel movements on helping your body to detoxify and also for feeding your good bacteria and crowding out bad bacteria the other benefit of sauerkraut is the fact that it's made on the cabbage. Cabbage is an extremely nutritious vegetable in its own right. It's full of vitamin K, vitamin C, it's a great source of fiber, uh, and it also contains some compounds which have been researched um, with regard to hormone and hormone detoxification. So you're getting a double whammy in that you're eating your cabbage. Your cabbage is more digestible once it's gone through the fermentation process and it's now full of probiotics. So sauerkraut is definitely one I would prioritize if you like the taste. Some people don't like the taste. It's quite it's sour cabbage is what sauerkraut stands for. It's kind of got that very acidic kind of tangy taste and um, it takes time to get used to. It's kind of like a pickle. But I love it. And I suppose the best thing is you're not eating it in massive quantities. So you're treating it like a condiment. You might have a tablespoon with a fried egg or with chicken or on your sandwich with cheese um, or as part of a salad. So you don't have to overdo it every day. It's just having a small amount. If sauerkraut isn't really your thing, um, the next thing you can think of is kefir. So kefir, I have some brewing here. You little, I've got little grains. It's made with kefir grains. They look like little teeny tiny cauliflowers. And what kefir grains do is ferment the lactose in milk. So you end up with a fermented milk. Um, this is a very easy process. You're just putting the grains into the milk and leaving it on your countertop for a couple of days where it turns into a yogurt-like substance. The difference between sauerkraut and kefir is that kefir contains probably a broader range of species of both beneficial yeasts and bacteria. And again, there is research on it uh, looking at its antiviral properties, antimicrobial properties, anti-cholesterol, immune boosting, and also used for a hormone detoxification. So it's a very good all-rounder. It's very easy to flavor. Once you have your kefir, you can put it into a glass bottle and keep it in the fridge. So we would have this very regularly. Uh, you can make a really nice smoothie with it, with just adding banana and strawberry. Um, you can use it for baking. Um, you can use it to make salad dressing. So there's quite a wide range of options for using your kefir once it's made and it's, it's perfect for children. So I would use that with kids quite a bit. The last one that I have to show you is my kombucha. So kombucha has become very popular. You can buy it in a lot of shops and you can buy kefir in a lot of shops now as well. Uh, it's interesting because they're both quite expensive but they're both quite easy to make once you get going. So kombucha is different to kefir in that it is a fermentation of a sweet tea. So you can make this tea on black tea, you can make it on green tea or on white tea. And you're adding um, a scoby. So the scoby is similar to kefir grains in that it is a substance or nearly like a creature, which is made of bacteria and yeasts. And this scoby digests the sugar in the sweet tea and turns kombucha then into a, a probiotic rich drink. So again, similar to kefir, it's got a range of species, both of yeast and bacteria. There isn't as much research on kombucha as there is on kefir and sauerkraut. Um, but I suppose when you're looking at it in the broader context, it's a good idea to have a bit of variety or say a bit of each in your day. So you're really getting quite a broad range of um, various yeasts and bacteria which can help your GI tract. You can see the scoby, which is used to make this kombucha in the background in my 
big four liter jar so you can see that it looks like a little bit of a creature so some people are a little bit put off by the actual uh, scoby itself but as i say you can buy it in the shops very readily it's much cheaper to make it yourself um, but you know even by starting by buying it and including it into your diet is a good idea so the other options are ones that you can buy uh, you can buy something like a miso which is really good so that's a fermented soy and that's particularly good for hormonal issues so if you have pms or perimenopausal uh, or symptoms of a high estrogen level something like miso soup is a really good idea to have every day um, again you can buy in shops this is a clear spring one organic but there's another brand called sanchi uh, this is a phytoestrogen so not only are you getting the probiotic benefit but you're getting a, another um, benefit as well and of course there's always natural yogurt which is very readily available and there's some really nice organic brands they're really very reasonable in aldi or little or you can buy at linisk so what's the best one to take my advice is to take a little bit of each if you can so something like a kefir smoothie in the morning a little bit of sauerkraut at lunchtime a small glass of kombucha in the evening and even if you can't do all of that it's just a good idea to choose one and to start and um, so that's my advice i run the fermentation workshop about five or six times a year so if you're interested in coming along and learning how to make some of this stuff for yourself then log on to foodhugs.ie forward slash events and you'll see um, the next dates for next year.